Alright, hello guys, and welcome to my video where we're going to be talking about the early pattern for October, so from the beginning of October, which we're already through, till about the 15th, letting you guys know when it could be cold and when it could be warm during this 15 day period. But before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now let's get right into things. First things first, we're looking at the teleconnections, and don't worry, I'm going to explain this for you, everything you need to know about this. First things first, we're looking at the Pacific North American Oscillation, or the PNA, and you see that black dashed line there, the darkest black dashed line? That's kind of our average number, so if it goes above that, we consider that a positive PNA, and if it goes below that, we consider that a negative PNA. And for colder temperatures in the West, we look for negative values in this, so underneath the dashed line. And then for colder temperatures in the East, we look for this number to go above the dashed line, and that would mean warmer temperatures for the West as well. So basically what this oscillation is, is, is it warm on the West Coast or cold on the West Coast? Above means warm on the West Coast, below means cold on the West Coast. And you can see we are expected to be below until about the 15th, so this looks to stay pretty consistently below uh, the average value until our halfway mark, which is all the time we're covering. So we're not really going to talk about that going into the positive, even though it looks like it will after the 15th. Now here's your AO, and if this goes positive, then we're looking at negative heights or below average temperatures in the Arctic region. This is called the Arctic Oscillation, by the way, for a reason. And then if it goes below, then we're looking at positive heights or above average temperatures in the Arctic regions. And if it goes negative, what we actually see happen is that it'll force that Arctic air to go somewhere else in the world, such as possibly the United States, and a lot of times the eastern United States when we do see a negative AO. So that's a very important oscillation. You can see for our first, I guess, quarter of the month, it looks to be positive, but for that second quarter or second week of October, it looks to go negative until at least about the 15th. So we're going to see a big switch up with that one. And then our NAO, which is our North Atlantic Oscillation, and this one is kind of has something to do with the heights or the pressure systems in the Atlantic Ocean. This one's a little bit more confusing, so I'm not really going to break it down quite as much, but I do have a video explaining this one that you can go find. But basically, when it's negative, we look at colder than normal conditions for the east coast of the United States, and when it's positive, we look at warmer than normal temperatures for the east coast of the United States. And you can see this looks to be negative for the most part until just after the 10th, uh, then, or actually just after the 1st, uh, so right about where we're at, and then maybe about the 7th or 8th, it, it pops positive for just a moment, and then it goes really far negative after that point. So we're going to see this one, for the most part, being negative during this first half of October. All right, now let's look at the temperature anomalies according to the GFS. I'm also going to show you guys the GEFS, which is the GFS ensemble model towards the end, and then also the European ensemble towards the end. So you're going to get a lot of different looks from different models, so we can take a look at what all the different ones are showing giving you guys just some different perspectives on what the models are thinking at this point. So this is actually October 1st. <clears throat> so this is two days ago, and you can see we, had, we have actually still a big ridge for the eastern United States and a big trough for the western United States. But as I move towards the third, you can see that that trough is actually moving quite a bit further east in a lot of those northern regions in the United States, especially the eastern United States, uh, com comparative to how they were in the beginning, have cooled down, uh, like Michigan, Wisconsin, and New England. You probably noticed that if you do live there, that it has cooled down quite a bit, especially actually in Nebraska and Kansas as well, and Iowa. Uh, but we still have very, very cold conditions for the Rocky Mountains. That is just moving further east, and then you can see that ridge has actually moved a lot further south by this morning today. Now, as we move to 12, 12Z tomorrow, which is going to be uh, kind of morning time as well, we see that that colder air is moving even further south and further east, and we actually have a little bit of a ridge there building for the four corner states and southern Rockies alike, uh, but by 12Z Saturday, you can see we do have a ridge there for the central United States up through the Dakotas, Minnesota, we're starting to warm up once again, but we have two troughs in the United States on the west coast and then on the east coast as well, big New England trough. Again, I was calling for a cool down if you guys remember a couple days ago or maybe like a week ago, I was calling for a cool down around the 4th, a big pattern switch and we're going to see that still. Uh, you, as you can see, by tomorrow and the next day, we will see this pattern switch where a very, very cold air mass moves towards the eastern United States. It's just going to be pretty short-lived. 
uh, as you can see by the 6th it starts to ridge in the east again and then we see those airs in the northwest and central united states cool down once again uh, by the 7th we see our next cool down already moving in to the eastern united states as the central united states cools down once again and then we're going to move on to the 8th and you can see it moves further east once again the northeast and mid-atlantic look cooler than normal by this point and actually the western united states finally looks to warm up a little bit here by the 8th and again I, I made a video, I don't know when, I think it might have been the same video that I mentioned the cool down during the 4th, and I said it would cool down around the 7th, 8th, 9th, once again, an even bigger cool down, and as you can see, that is happening here on this model run, and by the 9th, you can see it's starting to move east, starting to warm up in the central United States, uh, we see that cool air move towards the northeast, New England, and mid-Atlantic, but we have a big cool down happening there for the northwest once again. Uh, and by the 10th, you can see a warm-up is moving towards the eastern United States once again. But already right behind it, we can see another trough moving eastward. So I think you guys can pick up on the trend here that I'm getting at that we're going to be seeing uh, very, very flippy, flip-floppy conditions here during the first half of October. Cool down, warm-up, cool down, warm-up, cool down, warm-up. And we see that sometimes as the pattern's trying to switch and trying to change up. Really what's happening is we have a very progressive pattern, which means we have multiple troughs and ridges going on uh, in the northern hemisphere, and they're moving quite fast. That's really what we're dealing with here, and that might be a little bit too advanced for you, but don't worry about it. Uh, basically, all you need to know is that it's going to cool down, warm up, cool down, warm up during this first half of October. So you can see by the 11th, that warm up reaches the east coast, but right behind it, we have a giant cool down for the central United States that's heading eastward, uh, and by the 12th, it's headed towards the Great Lakes regions. The Gulf states finally getting pretty big cool down. The east coast, the extreme east coast, is still pretty warm. And you can see the southwest is warmed up by this point. Uh, by the 13th, this reaches the northeast coast, New England, mid-Atlantic. All these regions are feeling these colder temperatures. And this is the biggest one so far of October that we're seeing out of the 5th, 8th, and then this 12th, 13th, 14th one. The 12th, 13th, 14th one looks to be the most potent at this point. But again, this is the furthest out one. So the lowest confidence one for sure. But by the way, uh, this one reaches the southeast coast by the 14th. Uh, some of those Gulf states trying to stay warm. I don't know why you guys can't fully cool down, but it's kind of all over the place there for you guys. Uh, the southwest is still quite warm. And then by the 15th, that cool down looks to completely try to break up by this point. As you can see, temperatures are all over the place once again. And the 15th is the furthest I will go out. So we're going to have to wait and see. By the 15th, I'll be making my, uh, I guess, uh, late October pattern video. So we'll be able to talk more about what to expect for that later portion. So stay tuned for that one. But for now, we're just talking about the first through the 15th, which the first and second have already passed, by the way. Now, we're going to look at the GEF, GEFS Ensemble model by five-day increments. So this is the first through the fifth. You can see northern United States looking quite cold, and then the southeast and a little bit of the southwest there looking warmer than normal. This looks a lot like my October forecast, so this would help it verify quite nicely. Sixth through tenth, mostly the northwest and central United States looking cold. A little bit of the mid-Atlantic getting colder than normal conditions. And if you guys paid attention during this first half of this video, you saw that we will be having a... A few days of cool down within this this five day period uh, around the eighth, but uh, it's it's going to be surrounded by warm days in the beginning and end of this. So there is a few cool days within this, but more warm days than cool days. And then for the what is this thirteenth uh, through eighteenth of October, we see big time cool air there for the eastern United States and warm air for the Southwest. So it looks like the pattern switch is fully taking place by this point but we'll have to wait and see this is pretty far out but uh, this would be interesting to see happen but notice the northern United States as a whole is still below average from the northwest north central and northeastern United States they're still below average temperatures across that whole northern uh, third of the United States which is what I've been calling for in my October forecast also the European ensemble model Northwest. Uh, I just wanted to show the different cooldowns. So here's by the fifth. You can see they have that fifth cooldown for the northeast and northwest. Uh, here's that eighth cooldown, and you can see they have it approaching in the central United States there, uh, towards the eastern United States. And then here's that thirteenth cooldown. They have that one as well. So I just wanted to show that the GFS and European model are in pretty good agreement with this. Uh, and then I wanted to update you guys on that snow, 
little snow event for New England that I've been talking about for a while now. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick update on that. We see there is no winter weather advisories yet, but I expect that we will be seeing some there for New Hampshire and Maine very, very shortly. Uh, Here's actually, this is the National Weather Service's snowfall outlook or kind of what they're forecasting to happen. Uh, according to Pivotal Weather. Again, Pivotal Weather is such an awesome website. I'm just starting to get into it. Uh, But you can see from the White Mountains up through northern New Hampshire and then all of that interior Maine region, they have at least a dusting of snow falling, uh, which as as you can see, when I put it side by side, you can see that agrees very, very nicely with my forecast that I put out yesterday. Their forecast just came out today. So you can see... uh, I was a little bit ahead ahead of schedule, so I wasn't just making my map based on what they're showing. Actually, theirs came out after mine, uh, but it's nice to see that they are in really good agreement with what I was seeing. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Anyway, guys, stay awesome. I hope you guys have an awesome first half of October.